Hello and welcome to Building on a Budget Models. I'm Thomas and this is the fourth part of the McLaren Honda MP44 build in 120 scale by Tamiya. This part will focus on the engine using the Tamiya parts as well as the Perfect Parts Photo Etch set. Please like the video, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't done so already and hit the bell icon to stay notified for future videos. Initially you link together these two large parts with the engine block and the gearbox as well as the central support for the rear wing. The gearbox you paint in a kind of uh, dirty gold colour which is a mix of brown and silver. This part of the suspension fit in nicer when I gave it a light sanding. Don't forget to check the did you know facts in this video which we introduced last time. Some of the photo etch washers and nuts go at the bottom of this support for the rear wing. The rear wing section here itself is painted in semi-gloss black. It fits very securely into place. It's always important to make sure that this is pressed down firmly. The rear light fits in the middle of the uh, rear wing support. I did this in semi-gloss black around the outside, a little bit of red sharpie in the middle and some silver on the back to aid the reflectivity. The roll hoop here is made out of three parts and moulded in white plastic. Therefore I put it together and then painted it white. Used the same TS26 pure white that I'd done the body in. kept this part on the sprue so that I could spray it easily. The exhaust pipes were done in a mixture of gold and silver for the uh, six pipes and then the rest of it was done in a mixture of brown and silver like the gearbox. This part of the turbo is done in gunmetal grey. All fits together very nicely, but it's important to get it in exactly the right position so that it fits in the correct place under the cowling. These parts here are some of the turbo intercoolers, which actually were modified later on in the season. So you'll only see these on the early season uh, MP44. The photo etch set has a few little clips and clamps that need to go on to the exhaust pipes. Use a little bit of CA glue to fit them into place. The clamps are quite difficult to bend around the pipes themselves, so you need to be very careful when doing that. There are holes in the floor to pin the exhaust pipe into place as well as fitting it into the side of the engine block. So if you've covered the bottom with foil like I have, you need to open those holes back up. This intercooler section here fits on quite nicely. Pretty happy with that, then replicated it on the other side. Here's the decal sheet. You can see that I did this before I decaled the rest. This came with some extra Marlboro decals which went onto the monocoque underneath the um, body itself. I had to use a little bit of decal setting solution, microsole and set to help me with this as the semi-gloss and matte surface made the decals uh, struggle to adhere in places. This small decal here is for the American company Hercules 
who helped McLaren with the carbon fibre monocoque. The radio aerials on the top of the roll hoop were painted in semi-gloss black. They're actually very flimsy and I'm quite worried that they might break, so I'm tempted to remove them and replace them with some wire or perhaps some of the plastic tags as I've used in the past. It feels snugly if a little too tight in places onto the top, so I used some super glue to make sure it didn't remove. I test fitted the bodywork over the top to make sure that I got Ed and Senna's name in the right position. The decals come with two different versions depending on whether it's the early or late season. I obviously went with the early season as that is the version of the car I am creating. And there is Senna's name, Brazilian flag and the Hugo Boss logo. This red E goes in the middle to represent where the fire extinguisher switch is. There's also a photo edge pull cord to go here, but I'm going to attach that right at the end, make sure I don't damage it. I used some of the extra nuts and bolts to um, add some extra detail to the roll hoop. Pretty happy with how these look like little screw heads just going below the roll hoop. Now there are two versions of this plate here which you can see, one with screw heads and one without that you can add. The one that's moulded onto the tops of the engine, um, it recommends to sand this flat before attaching the photo etch version. So I painted it silver and then used one of my emery boards before gluing this part on. I used the one with the screw heads attached as I didn't want to waste any of the uh, photo etch ones. It fits really nicely, it's perfect size. There's another smaller part of this plate that goes next to it and I used my wax pencil to help position it. It's uh, quite a nice little item which I was recommended to buy. Following this I added the really crisply detailed Honda nameplate. A little bit more super glue and these were securely put in place. These boards go around the rear suspension arms. I'd already painted them in fluorescent red, so then added a little X18 semi-gloss black to the bottom of them and to the rear. There are then some photo etch struts that attach the engine to the floor and also to the exhaust system, which in reality would have provided a little bit of extra stability. Once fixing them into place with a little bit of CA glue, I used some of the washers and nuts to go onto the holes on the edges of them to make it look like they were properly screwed into the engine and exhaust. As well as the slots to fit these around the suspension arms, there are also two pins which fit in two holes in the bottom of the floor. Once securely putting them into place, I then added a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin just around the edges to secure them. I decided to add some of the Tamiya wire to the um, spark plugs to make the engine look a little bit more realistic. Fortunately, this is only a six cylinder car, so therefore there were only six. 
I added a little bit of super glue to the end of the wire and then pushed it firmly into place and bent round the other end to hide it underneath the engine block. The shock absorbers here I initially put in the wrong place. These should be much lower down than this, which would have created a better connection. So I moved them around a bit. The axles for the rear wheels were done in copper, matte black and a little bit of silver. Now this is the top of the gearbox. I tried to put it into place, but I realised that some changes need to be made. This top of the suspension arms need to go in first, and then the top of the gearbox can be secured on top of it. Again, a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin secured it nicely. There are a few more parts that need to go on top and the slots are nice and easy to fit in, securing with a little bit of super glue. There are a few more photo etch screw heads and nuts which go into different places here around the suspension which really add a nice touch of detail. These brass photo etch parts link part of the gearbox to these fluorescent red boards. They need to be bent slightly at the ends using the photo etch bender which I used in a previous video. You then put a little screw head onto the outside of the boards to make it look like they are connected properly. This is quite a nice little touch. Then added a few more kit parts to go onto the engine and gearbox. Now this is the tool which is supplied on the sprues by Tamiya, which you use to screw in the wheels. It will be much easier to attach the wheels onto the uh, brake system at the end if I already screw the thread in now. So that's what I'm doing. I'll then remove the screws, put them back in the bag, and just attach the brake system. These intakes are done in semi-gloss black, and they clip on very nicely. Now there are then some fuel injectors which go on top of the engine block. These are moulded onto the set, but I like the look of the metal parts of these. And here you can see me fitting one. I left some parts of them in bare metal and then did some of it in semi-gloss black to look like the wires. Helpfully, the layout of the pinholes in the top of the engine mean that you can only fit this in one particular way. And there it is. Now I wanted to add a little bit more detail, so I found a wire which uh, had broken and I cut it open and found what was inside. I'm going to make some use of that later. This is the oil cap which secures into place quite nicely and then there's a lovely little detailed photo etch top which goes on top of that. It's got some really nice detail which the camera is struggling to pick out but you might be able to see it. And then I used this kind of bluey silver coloured wire and fit it in underneath. This was one of the wires I cut from the faulty USB wire. The final part to add was the plenum chamber here which was done in semi-gloss black with a little mix of gold and silver for the top. I added a couple more screw heads and then there's also an FIA decal which goes on top of this goldy silver part. And there it is finished. This is definitely the most detailed engine that I have ever built. I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Um, I think the photo etch parts really do add a little bit 
Um, please let me know what you think, if you think it looks realistic, if you think there's anything else I could add or change. And um, yeah, just let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Please do comment, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I'll see you soon.